Our second reading today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old, Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb and be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, You must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be, Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. We begin and began this Lenten journey on um, Ash Wednesday, remembering our baptismal covenant um, and remembering um, both the frailty of our life um, and the grace of God. We own and are honest that we are both dust and to dust we will return, um, but that we are also breath, the very breath of God. And just as we are born um, in the water of our mother's wombs, um, there is also a birth that is needed for our spirit, so that in dust and in spirit, we might be wholly created and live into being who God made us to be. Um, we are very poignantly celebrating that this Sunday. The flowers on the altar are in honor of Abigail Marie Albright, a 28-week-old uh, baby um, who was still born um, to AJ and Mandy Albright um, this past week. And we also celebrate Everett Murphy Johnson, who was born and is thankfully um, healthy and now a child of God as well as our family. On the altar is the honesty of our journey, of all aspects of it, of all of the beginnings and all of the endings that we will encounter as we move through what it means to be alive. And the beauty of this is that we celebrate a God who is Emmanuel, who is with us. A God who knows and holds all of death and all of life and can weave them together in harmonic progression into a gentle refrain, into a refrain of beauty, into one that is whole, even and especially with all the brokenness. So when we make our pledge that we will renounce spiritual forces of wickedness and evil and our sin and our collective sin, when we with Abram hear God's call to an unknown land, we know that we can go because we know the one who is calling us. And this is the question that is at the very center of our faith and of our lives. 
It is the question that Wesley called us to ask in reading these stories of whether or not we believe that we can trust God farther than we can see God. Can we trust God beyond the pain of the future that Abigail won't have? Can we trust God when the future that we have planned for Everett isn't the future that Everett wants for himself or feels called to? Can we trust God when we are called to leave what we know and step into the unknown? Can we trust God when, like Nicodemus, there's going to be a lot of privilege to give up, to change, to be able to fully claim the work that we see happening around us? Can we trust God when the waters aren't warm and covering, but come in thundering waves that are dangerous and deadly? Can we trust God when the spirit in which we are born is not a soft, gentle breeze, but one of a hurricane raging? Can we trust God in the both and? of the life that we will always encounter. The good news is that the God we serve is the God who swept over the waters of chaos and brought forth life. That the God we serve is the one who called Abram, and when Abram freaked out because there wasn't any bread or food, there was a famine in the land that God had called him to, he's like, forget this, this isn't working, and went to Egypt and mucked it all up, and God still chose him and still worked through him, and did he do that run to Egypt just once? He learned his lesson, right? And they kept going? Yeah, no, it was twice. <laughs> But God still loves, God still blesses, God still works with. God still wants to weave all of our pain and all of our joy, all our grief and all our hope into a song that is ours and that is God's and is one that is beautiful and is one that is not of condemnation but of salvation. Because once we can trust God beyond what we can see, then what happens? We see beyond what we can see now. There is more that opens to, up to us. There is more that we find and can enter into. There is more of the universe that we can touch and smell and sense and know. We need a God who is beyond us because who else is going to clean up our mess for us and who else will be able to? But it's scary because it requires a trust in us, a trust that sometimes it's impossible to have when the trust around us is so broken over and over again, when over and over again we go and things fall apart. We think that we're following and we have Abigail not born to us. There are those times over and over again that we can't help but then to erode at the very trust we give to God. Because how is it possible? How will it be okay? How can it be when we know what's happened in our lives and we see what's happened in the lives of those around us and hear of it on the news? Friends, that's why we gather these Sunday mornings. That's why we gather together and study. That's why we gather on Thursdays and covenant and accountability. Because we have to tell us the other story that we remembered in this baptism too of how God brought Abram back, not just once, but twice from Egypt, of how God blessed both Cain and Abel when there was a murder before there was a death in our world. When God worked with us every step of the way, when we were the ones who were enslaved and needed set free in Egypt, and when we were the ones 
who were sent into exile because we were the perpetrators of the harm and of the evil. We serve a God who sent prophets to call us back. And even when we did not follow them, we serve a God who sent his son to give us a living and breathing and touchable example of what life can look like when we choose to follow God with all of who we are. When we choose to give up, as Christ gave up all of heaven, the second person of the Trinity, to come and be with us and walk with us and cry with us and be angry with us and love and to show what complete faithfulness looks like and what God can accomplish through it. And yes, Jesus was tortured and was killed. Birthing isn't easy. Ask any mother who has been through it. It is a painful, excruciating process, but is also one that brings life and that brings joy and brings a whole bunch of surprises and a new level and depth of life that we never saw before. How will our spiritual birth be any different? It's going to be hard to give up, to say no to what we have to, to be able to fully follow Christ. But that is our call. And so whether we can just take a baby step like Nicodemus and meet Jesus in the cover of darkness and of secrecy before we're ready to publicly give up what it means for us. Whether it's Abraham and we're ready to go, but then we're like, yeah, just kidding, and go back to Egypt and renege on that going. God will be with us every step of the way, and God will take every pain and every joy that we encounter in life and that we place before God and weave it together into a word and into a song of salvation, of shalom, of wholeness. This is our journey, and we can begin it if we are willing to leave what God needs us to. May we help each other practice that and support each other in this way.